Don't tell me Klipsch doesn't have a sense of humor. I asked for a heritage subwoofer and, well, they sent me this. Nice. Jokes aside, let's talk about the new ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system from Klipsch. get started, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Omaze. Omaze is giving you a chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid, Tesla's premium flagship SUV that sports over 1,000 horsepower with a 0-60 to 60 time of 2.5 seconds. That is fast. But the Model X is more than just mere speed. It seats up to 7 comfortably, comes with a panoramic roof, and has a 17-inch cinematic display infotainment system in the front with separate rear seat screens for your passengers. Oh, and don't forget the full self-driving capability. But the best part of all of this, when you enter for your chance to win the Tesla, you're actually helping to raise money for not one, but two worthwhile charities. Give Power and 501c3. Now, Give Power is a nonprofit that is helping to bring safe drinking water to over 2 billion people around the world who need it. 501c3 is a nonprofit tasked with raising awareness for solutions that will help younger generations pioneer a more sustainable future. For your chance to win the Tesla Model X Plaid and support Give Power and 501c3, go to amaze.com forward slash Robinson or just click the link in the description. Thank you to Amaze for sponsoring this video. And now, back to it. The ProMedia Heritage 2.1 speaker system is a desktop setup consisting of two speakers and a powered subwoofer designed to appear like Klipsch's own higher-end Heritage speakers, more specifically the Heresy 4, which you know I love. Obviously, this system is not meant as a replacement for the Heresy or for any of the Heritage speakers for that matter, but diehard Klipsch fans will no doubt welcome this system's retro styling and see it as a way of bringing just a bit of Heritage flair to other parts of the home. The small satellite speakers are a two-way design that feature a one-inch polymer driver that rests inside Klipsch's own Tractrix horn waveguide, and they're mated to a four-inch polycone woofer. Now, the speakers themselves, they're not powered, but instead they draw power from the sub, which has a separate 35-watt per channel amplifier inside just for the satellite speakers. Now, the subwoofer itself features an eight-inch long-throw polycone woofer that is powered by its own 150-watt amplifier. Combined, the Heritage 2.1 system has has a manufacturer reported frequency response of 29 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This being a powered speaker system, we don't have to concern ourselves too much with technicalities like sensitivity and impedance, which is nice. The Pro Media system has three input options, two physical and one wireless. Now you can connect to the system through USB or using standard RCA style analog inputs. It also has Bluetooth for those of you who prefer a wireless setup. Now all of the inputs, not to mention the system volume and control over the subwoofer's level can be accessed using the included remote, which is a nice touch. Now my office isn't complete yet, so rather than set up the ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system at our kitchen counter, which is where both Christy and I currently work on videos like this one, I opted to set the system up on our new CB2 credenza in our main room. Now I had initially planned on listening via Bluetooth using my iPhone, though shortly after setting up the system, I remembered that we got a WIM Mini Music Streamer, so I also used that. Now this $99 streamer really elevates the Klipsch system in terms of functionality, allowing it to be connected to, say, Alexa and become part of a makeshift distributed audio system that included our Pantheon 1 smart speaker that we just reviewed. Oh, and if you don't have one of these little mini streamers, know that Bluetooth works just as well. Now the ProMedia system can play loud with surprisingly low distortion when doing so. Also the sub, which again features an eight inch driver driven by its own 150 watt amplifier can absolutely throw down. Out of the box, it was actually too much for even our large living room. Thankfully, it could be turned down either on the back of the sub itself or via the remote, which is very, very handy. But let's break it down. Because the powered subwoofer features a variable level control, you can dial the bass down or up to taste. If you go too loud, it is possible to get the sub to misbehave and get a bit bloated, not to mention expose some cabinet resonance. I want to stress, however, that it takes you pushing this sub pretty loud, likely louder than most consumers would ever really listen to get to that ugly place. Now, dial the subwoofer in for a more seamless transition, you know, between it and the satellite speakers, and be prepared to be pleasantly surprised. It's actually pretty capable, even being surprisingly agile at times, which I noted when listening to the opening drum solo of Say Goodbye by Dave Matthews Band. 
The kick drum during that opening solo had both solid scale as well as detail. The mallet hit with palpable authority with solid weight, though admittedly higher end subwoofers like say our SVS 3000 Micro or even Klipsch's own SPL 100 do a better job getting the finer textures surrounding the mallet strike just right. But I'm not losing sleep over this because the entire ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system costs less than either of those subwoofers. So yeah. Moving on to the mid-range and treble, because the ProMedia satellites are on the smaller side, they're not the most weighty on their own, relying exclusively on the sub for bass, not to mention mid-range to a large degree. This makes their sound very easily influenced. Too much bass, as in turn the sub up, and the satellites will sound fuller to a degree, but turn the sub down too much and they're going to come across as lean, lean, lean. With the blend just right, however, the satellites still have a mildly leaner mid-range that picks up just a bit of energy as you transition towards the tweeter. So vocals are clear and intelligible, but they're going to lack just a little bit of body. And the same is true of instruments that also occupy the mid-range. You're never going to miss a note, and thanks to the tweeter, you may even like the satellite's inherent detail. But these speakers don't quite nail the natural timbre of instruments like acoustic guitars or even some male and female vocals the way larger two-way speakers with a bit more mid-range and mid-bass presence can. This isn't necessarily a knock against the Pro Media speakers, it's just an obvious limitation of their sheer size and design. All that said, with the sub dialed in just so, and when playing back at reasonable volumes between say 50 and 70 dB, music is wholly enjoyable. Now when it comes to soundstage and dynamics, the ProMedia 2.1 is shockingly good. These tiny speakers image quite well with a great center image. Tow them in just a bit and the center image locks in proverbial stone and the lateral dispersion is boundary defying. There is a more forward presence to these speakers, which should come as no surprise given their small size and somewhat treble forward demeanor and design makeup. That said, I do not consider them to be shouty or fatiguing. Not to say that either can't happen, especially if you choose to listen to them at incredibly loud volumes and in the near field, but keep things within reason and remember, you're listening to a sub $350 speaker system. Keep that in mind and I doubt many of you will have much to complain about. Dynamically, it can be explosive and even come across as sounding much larger than it is. For a more affordable speaker package, I think Klipsch is actually giving you an awful lot for your money. I love the remote control, even if it is a carryover from some of their soundbars. It's handy AF, especially for dialing in the bass on the fly. I wish the system had either a built-in phono preamp or at a minimum an extra pair of analog inputs, but aside from that, it's hard to fault this system in terms of features at this price. In terms of comparison, the ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system should be compared to the likes of the Kanto YU2 powered speakers, which I used on my desktop rig for most of last year. I love the YU2s, and at $199 a pair, I consider them to be a relative steal. They have a bit more power compared to the ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system, at least with respect to the satellite speakers, but I'm not sure many listeners would notice. The YU2s have a subwoofer output, which is great, but it also means that the subwoofer is optional. I paired my YU2s with the Kanto Sub 8, which is also comparable to the Klipsch. This Kanto combo will run you about $80 more than the Klipsch. Now, which is better is going to be a matter of personal taste. I could be happy with either, though I will admit, I prefer the mini Heresy 4 styling of the ProMedia Heritage setup just a bit more over that of the Kanto. Now another speaker that comes to mind is U-Turn Audio's new Ethos powered speaker. Now I have not finished my evaluation of these speakers yet, but if you're in the market for a desktop solution at or around the Klipsch's price point, the Ethos should be high on your list. Stay tuned for our full review of the Ethos coming to the channel very soon. Now stepping things up in terms of size, there is the Fluence AI41 powered monitors at $249 a pair. And these are a solid option. I even lived with the pair for a bit before their release. They have great scale, better mid-range on their own, but I found them to be a little noisy with respect to tweeter hiss. While hiss can be somewhat common in budget powered speakers, when I place these in the near field, the hiss from the AI41s proved to be just a little bit too much for me, which is why I sent my pair back. 
So while I'm still waiting for my Heritage inspired subwoofer, I have to say I have come away from my time with the ProMedia Heritage 2.1 system more than a little impressed. No, it's not the end all be all in terms of speaker packages, but it's not a gimmick or a cash grab either. This system is legit. I listened to it for hours at a time, both at low and high volumes, and honestly just enjoyed myself, which is kind of the point. This is the kind of no-brainer, fun audio purchase I think a lot of people can get behind because you don't have to be an audiophile or an expert in hi-fi BS to just enjoy it. I love its visual style because all too often desktop speakers look pulled from the basement of some Twitch streamer, whereas the Pro Media Heritage 2.1 system is right at home on a desk or in your living room. So that's it. That is now my review. But before we sign off, I wonder if Christy liked it. Well, thank goodness for being able to turn down the subwoofer. Otherwise, this would have been a repeat of the Cinema 1200 review. <laughs> oh, my God. That would have been a disaster. Yeah. Um, look, I have, I have personally, mm -hmm. I have some mixed feelings. Okay. I never Stress, know what she's going to say. The, I never know what she's going to say. Stressing on the personal, okay? Okay. As so much as you know, I love Klipsch Heritage products and mm -hmm. the heresies. Mm-hmm. I am not a big fan of the miniaturization of these speakers. Okay. I think they could have been, or I think they need to be a, just a little bit bigger. Okay. So that they would look less like a toy or a souvenir that you would get at like the gift shop. Um, I mean, they're actually, they're actually roughly the same size as the Kanto YU2s. Um, they there's a there's a number of speakers that are this size for desktop use and that's important to note like they they don't look ridiculous next to say a laptop or even a 24 to 32 inch monitor um i think you're just a little bit more used to say YU4s YU6s Tannoy Golds like the, the larger what i would say are called studio monitors opposed to like desktop Monitors. I mean, maybe so. I also think just having the visual reference mm -hmm. of having lived with a pair of heresies <laughs> makes yeah. a big difference. Sure, sure. But I do think they look a little toy-like. And okay. I think that if they had been a little bit larger, that some of the issues you you mentioned with respect to like mid-range or mid-bass yeah. could have been also addressed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, a larger speaker would have performed a little bit better in those regards by themselves yeah but, for sure yeah uh but i will say the sub subwoofer looks really nice i definitely feel like they're trolling you a little bit I, I kinda, um, yeah. with the whole heritage uh <laughs> look you know hopefully they'll give you what you ask for at some point obviously clearly it's possible yeah um as far as the sound goes i think these sound way way bigger than you would expect them to mm -hmm. um and honestly i think some people could get away with using them in a small space. I mean, not just a desktop. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's what people are going to do. This would be a great way to bring people that are in like the college. Yeah. At, you know, in college at that time of their lives, like yeah. a way to, to bring them into the Klipsch family of brands and sort of yeah. create that relationship. Well, I, I think it, I think it's just a great product to bring young people into the hobby in general, whether or not you're like turning them into diehard Klipsch fans is kind of irrelevant. I mean, at $350, you know, um, this is, this is something that if, if, you know, I was a parent or, or, you know, I was trying to, um, foster a love of audio in a, a younger person or a child, like, oh my God, this would be such a great, great option. Totally, totally. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. <laughs> you, might, you were far more eloquent than I <laughs> okay. could have been. Uh, anyway, um, as far as my preferences go, mm -hmm. I, I, I actually prefer the look of the Canto and the U-turn that you mentioned over this setup. And mm -hmm. I think, I think it's just like if I'm going strictly for a desk, s desktop solution, mm -hmm. I'm not really trying to create like a vintage vibe or whatever, but mm -hmm. that's just Again, totally, totally my personal preference. Okay. Now, I haven't spent enough time listening to the U-turn, mm -hmm. um, but the Kanto YU speakers are such a good buy, so I might lean towards those. Mm -hmm. The thing that surprised me, you didn't mention in the review, was Tannoy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm still a huge fan of the Tannoy Gold wine, mm-hmm. uh, which are, in my opinion, are some of the best small powered speakers on the market. Sure, sure. My personal thoughts aside, mm-hmm. I expect this to be a big hit with Klipsch fans. And I think that, like I said just a few minutes ago, I really think that there's going to be a lot of people that, while I know you've said don't expect a Klipsch Heresy performance or a mm-hmm. Heritage performance, they're going to go and try to get it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's it's, human nature. It's human nature. It's named Heritage and it looks the part. Uh, but it's it's a looks only thing. Sure. Yeah. I, but I think that they're going to be really impressed with how loud it sounds. Well, and I think... I, or how loud it plays. How loud it plays for sure. But it also, I want to stress this. If you dial in the subwoofer just right... It is, in, it is surprisingly coherent, and while it can play loud with low distortion, there is some finesse to this system. It's not just a brawler. Um, and I think that sometimes Klipsch gets that reputation for being sort of just a sledgehammer of well, a speaker. Well, it is in their branding. It is in you their know, branding. They, do like, they, like, they lean into piss it. piss off the neighbors. I mean, yeah. come on. They, they, bro- le- they, they, they brought this on it. themselves willingly. <laughs> They do lean into it, but it is important to know that there is there's a surprising amount of finesse, even with this very, very uh, budget oriented system. Obviously, the more upmarket you go with their with their line, um, the more intricate uh, their sound can actually be. But yeah, it's a I did not look. (laughs) I saw this picture leak on social media and I went, what the you know? Uh, Because I saw the subwoofer first, and I was like, they did it! And then I saw that it was part of a satellite speaker, and I was like, come on. Um, And, you know, at $349, I I didn't expect much. And so I was pleasantly surprised. I really was. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that's a good system. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to solve a lot of problems for a large, large group of either existing audiophiles or budding enthusiasts who may, because of systems like this, become audiophiles themselves. Um, So bravo. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay, so that is now our review of the Clips Pro Media Heritage 2.1 speaker system. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you is, obviously I want to know what you think of this Heritage setup, but more importantly... Who else wants a heritage subwoofer? Come on. <laughs> Do we need to start a petition? I you know what? Let's let the comments be the petition and I I will screenshot it and I will send it to them. So sound off. You want a heritage subwoofer? Sound off in the comments below and I will send it to them. We're going to let them know. We're going to let them know we're going to get this done. I, I, I'm confident we are going to get this done. So let's let's get it going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Oh, and real quick, uh, once again, thank you to Amaze for sponsoring this video. Uh, to enter for your chance to win the Tesla Model X Plaid Edition, go to amaze.com forward slash Robin and help a good cause in the process. Um, And that's it. That is it for us. That's official. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.